Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and this is the official LEGO $550 Ultimate Collector Series style Hulkbuster. When it was released, it was one of the poorly rated sets. In fact, it was one of the worst Marvel sets that they released due to the fact that it has a lot of bad proportions, the shoulder pads are not really that accurate, the ankles are way too thin, the chest plates are too long, Honestly, I could keep going on as to why this model does not look anything like the official Hulkbuster, and because of that, it was one of the worst reviewed Marvel sets in recent history, with the set now on deep discount because honestly, no one was paying $550 for an inaccurate Hulkbuster. Well, that has been solved, because this right here is a mock version using only the parts included in this set, no extra parts required whatsoever. The amazing mockist Ransom Fern has put together a rebuild of the UCS Hulkbuster that fixes, well, everything about it. It is just as sturdy, just as poseable, but it is actually 100% accurate to the actual movie Hulkbuster and is probably one of the most accurate models of the Hulkbuster I have ever seen anybody make in Lego form. It is really shocking to me how a mockist was able to take literally just the parts in this set and make it a thousand times better with this model, but don't just take my word for it, because right now we are going to jump into a review of both Hulkbusters, comparing one versus the other, and really being able to showcase what the mock does right and what the set does wrong. And thankfully, instructions are available for purchase in the link down in the description below. I personally paid, I believe, around $20 or $40 for them. You can check them out down in the description below linked, and I felt like whatever price I paid was a really fair price because I just now have a much better Hulkbuster model, and I figured it made so much sense to buy a second copy of the set just to showcase how much better you can make this build using just the parts from the original set. Let's dive into it right now. Okay, so that right there is the official LEGO UCS Hulkbuster set. Set number 76210, it comes with 4,049 pieces and retailed for 550 US dollars. Although right now it is on sale for $385, which is a lot more fair. Now this right here is a mock. However, this is no ordinary mock. This uses only the pieces in this set Literally no extra pieces were required. It uses almost all of them. In fact, there are only a handful of pieces left over to improve the set in almost every single possible way. This mock was designed by mockist Ransom Fern, who in the past has made a ton of really excellent types of Iron Mans and Hulkbusters and different Iron Man armors and suits, and even was able to revamp the construction or large action figure Iron Man figure, which is the one released in 2022 right here, using two copies of it plus the Eternals Ardashim set to make a much bigger and bulkier and more accurate Iron Man Mark 43 outfit. This, however, is just the official set version, and there's a reason why it's here. Now, when this set was first released, it drew almost universal ire from the very first time somebody kind of stumbled upon the box in a store where it was being sold early. There are a number of reasons as to why this is the case. First of all, I think the biggest and most glaring issue with the actual official set is that the shoulder elements right here, kind of the large muscles, are just way too tall. They're almost way too vertical. If you want to look at exactly what it's supposed to look like, you can either Google an image of the Age of Ultron Hulkbuster online, or just look at this one to see exactly how the proportions are supposed to look, but essentially these pads were just way too big, they were disproportionately large, the arc reactor as a result was positioned far too low on the chest, where in relation to the head it was almost in the middle, not anywhere near the actual chest pace which it was supposed to be at, and then you have a very awkward type of construction for the belly down here. There's a very large type of side armor design for the legs, which wasn't that bad in relation to everything else, but really accentuates how weird and whack the proportions are on this entire thing. And that's not all. The shoulder armor was advertised to be like this, which also looks nothing like the actual more rounded shapes they've accomplished with the actual Hulkbuster itself. Obviously when the shoulder armor is like this you have very exposed upper arms here and it just feels incomplete, but if you rotate them outwards they are just sticking right out of the body itself, like there's no way to push it inwards closer to the body, so you have these pretty unsightly gaps here, you have gaps here, and this was obviously meant so that you could actually pose the arms, but there was a better solution to be able to do that, which we're going to take a look at pretty soon. 
Now, surprisingly enough, there's nothing actually that wrong with the way that the hands and the lower arms are constructed. These gold elements were actually good on the actual original model itself, or pretty much good for the most part. The hands themselves did integrate a light brick, so they're a little bit bulkier than they should be. The proportions are not quite right, but overall the hands are all right. But then things also started to fall apart once you got down to the legs themselves. You see, the main issue with the legs is that this is the angle here. And if you know what the Hulkbuster actually looks like, the ankles widen out. The ankles do not taper inwards. So despite the size of this build, the ankles just were not right at all. The knees also were pretty gappy. You have this movable arc reactor on the knees, which kind of accentuates the fact that they are bent, which is cool how they were able to incorporate some sort of a bend to the knees, but it was a huge compromise to be able to do that because now there's a lot of gaps both on the top and bottom. It doesn't feel fully armored up the way it's supposed to, and most importantly, the feet and the ankles are just wrong. In fact, in my opinion, the ankles are even worse than the upper chest because maybe, maybe you can make the argument that, okay, maybe you can imagine that it's kind of bent forwards and you're looking at it from a weird perspective. But this is just not correct. Like, this is just wrong. I understand if they wanted to make the ankles thin to allow for articulation, but this is a huge model. There's no articulation here. What you see is what you get in terms of the actual articulation. I mean, you can't move anything around. The only thing you can move are the arms and the hands, and that is basically it. So, really, I do not know what LEGO was cooking up with this official set. It honestly is a little embarrassing that they released such a large and expensive set that just is not accurate whatsoever. It is offensively wrong in many ways, it just is very obviously wrong, and it's very strange to me that this kind of made it past LEGO's quality control and whatnot, because typically for 18 plus sets, they're usually really good, like usually 18 plus sets are very accurate, and they're some of the best, like the Hogwarts Express, like even though that was a really big and oversized build, it was really accurate and stuff like that, and of course it is harder to do a sculpture as a LEGO set, something humanoid like this. Or is it? Because this mock here is made by Ransom Fur, and I don't actually have anything negative to say about it. It is using pieces just from the original set, where it, again, used only a matter of a small pile of pieces left over, and just improves on it in every way. Now, I built this model on Twitch live in its entirety, where I streamed the entire building process, and I will say, probably the only negative thing I will say about this process is that it was definitely one of the hardest LEGO builds I've done in my life. Not because of technical complexity, but because it was a mock, I had to pour all of the pieces out on my table all at once. My table did not fit all of the pieces, so I had half the pieces on the table, half still in bags, and finding pieces in the initial kind of burst of putting together the torso was one of the hardest LEGO building tasks I've done in my life, and that is not an exaggeration. If you've seen or witnessed any of my Twitch streams where I went through and built this live, I was literally losing it. I believe the entire ordeal took somewhere around 20 hours to put together. Together. It was ridiculously long, almost double the length it took to put together the original set, because despite using the same number of pieces, they were not sorted in individual bags, and you had to dump them all out on the table and just kind of sift through. Would I have been faster if I sorted the pieces beforehand? Probably, but I really don't like sorting. So, you know what? I accepted my fate, and it did get easier as the build went on, and I was able to recruit a friend, thanks, shout out to Rob, to put this together. So, that went together a little bit faster after I had help as well as less pieces. But oh man, this was a pain to put together. But the final result is just so, so impressive. Right now you can see the pieces left over, which is a surprisingly low amount. Like, this is actually a really good amount of pieces left over. I was initially worried that maybe I would have a ton of pieces left over and I would feel a little bit guilty about buying the same set twice because I would just dump those extra pieces in my bin. But no, like, this used almost every single one of the pieces, which was just so, so impressive. And now... Going back to the review studio, you can see just what difference this shows versus this. So I'm going to get the Iron Man figure out of the way first because I want to talk about that one in a little bit and just focus in on the two Hulkbusters themselves. Now, there is one major change made in the posing, which is the legs are pretty much just standing straight instead of at an angle, which normally I would say that having the knees bent is a better and more dynamic pose. 
But no, not in this case, because here, having the legs fully straight really does be able to showcase the thickness of the legs themselves, how they actually have really stocky strength going into the legs. It just feels so much stronger. It feels more impressive. And you do kind of can still see the knee. I mean, you can still see a curvature for the knee armor here. The way this is constructed for the armor kind of rotating downwards is just so much better than this. And I feel like the only way to do this is to give a brief overview of the changes made, of which there were many. I don't think anything was remotely close to the original set, other than maybe bits and pieces of the internal frame, and then just go from there. So first of all, let's start with the obvious, right? The elephant in the room is that the upper pecs or the upper muscles are no longer incredibly long and vertical. Instead, they are actually shaped the way they are actually supposed to be, which is how the real thing looks. The shaping on it is so much better. The arc reactor has been moved upwards, which is just a major, major improvement in almost every way. I declined to put stickers on this one, but I probably will actually go ahead and put the stickers on the piece just to make it feel a little bit more accurate once I finish. I just wanted to do the review showcasing it with no stickers because you don't really need any stickers on it. Those would just add to the effect a little bit, but you can just see how much of an improvement this makes. The shaping is so good, and unlike a lot of mocks out there, this is really stable. Like, despite having all these crazy angles, I'm applying pretty significant force to tapping it, and nothing's like breaking off. Everything is held on really strongly, and that is so impressive, because one of my biggest concerns was that, okay, this looks a lot better than the actual set, right? But how's it gonna hold up? And the answer is, it is just as stable, if not more stable, in every way than the original set, which is kind of weird. Like, I don't know how Ransom Fern was able to do this. Seriously, like, my utmost respect goes out to the Makas who made this, because I cannot imagine dumping out all the pieces to this, sitting down and being like, all right, I guess I'm just going to make it good, and starting effectively from scratch, because really, this model is built pretty much from scratch from the ground up. There are no similarities really whatsoever other than, I guess, some details of the fingers, but even those are pretty changed around. It's just shocking how much better this is than this with just a few different pieces. I mean, obviously, there's the same amount of pieces being used. It's just so, so impressive. I could not gush more over how impressive of a feat this is to take built pieces, to take pieces of a $550 set and turn it into this. Now, the shaping on the torso was a lot better because the Hulkbuster, as you can see in the movie, actually has a bit of a rounded belly. It kind of almost has sumo wrestler proportions, where you can see that this is actually at an angle, where this entire piece is rounded. It's kind of curved outwards, which they kind of tried to do in the official set. Like, you kind of have that, but it's way too exaggerated, and since it's using just flat studs on the side building, you do have almost too extreme of a curve going into the arc reactor itself. Versus here, this entire assembly is angled outward, so you do have that nice roundness captured for the torso itself. Now, we're gonna of course take a look at the backs of the models and whatnot, but I just wanna talk about the fronts first. Big, big change here, big change, oh boy. This is the large angles are being used here now, so they effectively use these large kind of armor elements which were initially used, where were those pieces even used on this model? I guess they were used like for these? and they were used in the backs of the feet, but instead they're used here to form the ankles, which just looks so much better and stockier. And what's very cool is that there's actually a hidden feature where you can actually press a flap on the back here and turn the light bricks on on the knees themselves. So two light bricks are integrated on the knees instead of on the hands. And the very cool thing is that once they're on, they stay on. Like these light bricks have a hinge on the back. So once you push the hinge in, they will stay on. And the same goes for the chest one, which I'll showcase what that looks like opened up, but this does light up. One of the very awkward things about the official set is that you have this like button here and the button will turn the arc reactor on. It doesn't stay on, it just kind of turns on like that. But there's actually a flap on the inside to turn it on and leave it staying on, which is very, very cool, which you can't really access that easily. That is the only downside. You have to kind of remove the entire thing and shuffle everything around. So I'll showcase that in a second, but really you kind of get the gist of it. Now, the posability is basically the same going from this model to this model. Let me showcase that. So. You can rotate the arms on the official set up and down like so. They're using actually, oh my. Yeah, like the official set is actually not 
even put together that well. Like, there's parts that are falling off of it right now as I rotate it around, just from the flex of rotating it. But you have a lot of friction, which is really nice. Of course, the shoulder armor does move back and forth to allow you to accommodate that. There are dual ratchet joints here, so that makes a lot of sense. And the hands themselves are mounted on their own ratchet joints, so you can kind of rotate those around. You have each individual finger being able to pose, and that's it. Like, really, for a model this size, that is all the articulation you would pretty much want to expect. Despite this being so much bulkier and better and more fully armored up, the same can be done for this model. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to move this a little bit over to the side so we can showcase the articulation on this. First of all, the way that this was able to be done was that the shoulder armor can actually be kind of removed on a hinge and moved up and down. Like you can kind of move it like upwards and downwards, which is also a lot more realistic compared to the actual movie prop. But as you can see, you can move it outwards. So you do have the bandwidth to actually rotate these upwards pretty much the same as you would want to see. Like this, this is all that you would need. And it just is so much better armored than, I mean, you can't even raise it that high on this one. That's crazy. You cannot even make those ratchet joints straight on the official model. I didn't even realize that. So articulation is better than the official model and it's more covered up, which is crazy because the reason why these shoulder pads have so much gaps is because they wanted you to be able to articulate the arms. Same amount of articulation for this. Actually, can you bend it even more? Yeah, you can. You can make this a 90 degree elbow and you cannot do it for this one. So, okay more articulation on the actual elbow here same amount of articulation for the hands there are no light bricks in the hands themselves just to make things a little bit easier to kind of use and move around and just to make them a little bit more accurate so no light bricks but they use these glow-in-the-dark pieces which i think actually look better on the hands the knees having the transparent blue elements with lights in them just feel a lot cooler to me so i actually do like that change but pretty much the same amount of articulation. The hands, because they do not have light bricks in them, just look better than the actual hands for the official set. They're just much less bulky and blocky and they feel just a little bit more smooth. But obviously for the hands, I would say that they are the closest in terms of comparing the two models. Like they are the most similar when you take a look at the hands themselves. That's that amount of articulation and that's pretty much it. Now, Moving these to the back, and yes, we will take a look at what it looks like to open up the cockpit in a little bit. Of course, we are getting to that. I just want to kind of do a side comparison of the two Hulkbusters facing each other first to showcase just the difference between them, where these legs are just so much bulkier and more impressive looking. It feels so much sturdier than the official set. Yes, I would say the only way that the mock suffers maybe a little bit is that there's just a lot more studs on the side here. like. This objectively feels cleaner and smoother than this. However, the builder was working with basically just existing pieces from the set, and I'm sure if they just had a few extra pieces, they would be able to just clean that part up a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. Like, it really just does the job totally okay, and it is a totally fine trade-off. Like, if I had to pick between the ankle being this skinny, or having this and then, like, a little bit of stud showing on the side, I would take this any day of the week. So. That is totally fine. I also really like how there are a big pieces of armor on the back here, like big chunks of armor associated with the back of the model here, which the original set just simply doesn't have. And then rotating these around once more, you can really see what the back of the model looks like. And I will say that there are a couple of things that here the set does do a little bit better looking at the back. These Technic constructions back here honestly don't really look that good. They feel a little bit unfinished for the mock itself. Again, this is because the mock didn't have all of the pieces that they could have been using available. Like, I'm sure that this could have been done a lot better if it was just a little bit cleaner in terms of the pieces available. Let me just make that a little bit tighter there. But overall, not even that big of a deal. Like, you can say that some mechanical or exposed detailing one of the coolest things though that the official mock does or the official or the mock does compared to the official set is you have these movable flaps here and these feel like almost flight flaps like these really do feel dynamic like an iron man suit so big fan of these you have the suggestion of them here like you kind of have them here but these ones are a lot more pronounced they're a lot more obvious these also lift up because of this right here is the button to turn the light on the leg on so you just kind of press on the button here and the light will automatically turn on which is a really cool feature and overall 
Very, very impressive how the build was done because one of the coolest things about this that you might not even notice is that the feet are rotated out at an angle. Like they are not perfectly straight. The feet are not only at an angle here, but they are at an angle here. And to do that was a feat of engineering unlike anything I've ever done in a Lego build before that is not only stable and does the job, but also gets that angle pretty perfectly. So honestly, a crazy impressive feat. Now, moving on to the back here, you may notice that yeah, it might be a little bit cleaner here along the back, I will admit that. I mean, it does feel a bit cleaner with kind of all the smooth stuff and there's no studs showing on the back. But again, the builder was working with what they had, right? Like, these are just pieces being used for the set itself. And if you look at the back of the actual Hulkbuster, this is a lot more accurate to have these very obvious blue lights on the back rather than them being kind of hidden away and facing inwards. So, if anything, this is actually still more accurate than this. So... Very, very, very impressive how this was done. Now, there is a bit of a hatch here on the back of the model, which I'm not really sure what that's for. I guess it's supposed to be able so you can get your fingers in and clear it up when the other figure is inside, and we'll talk about that in a second. This one also has the same hatch to make it a little bit easier to be able to move around the figures, so that functionality is, re is basically retained. One of the coolest things about this is that rotating on upwards you can see that the difference in the armoring upwards is just night and day, how much you have the top of the mock being fully armored up, which just looks so, so impressive and cool, versus the official set, which kind of is squared off. It is just so cool how this is accomplished. I mean, the difference between the models is so severe and so stark that, stark, haha, that these are just really, really interesting to be actually compared against each other. Now, moving these back towards the front, I do want to showcase the actual big functionality that both of these have, and actually one of the reasons why the official set was blamed for not having correct proportions. But as you can see right about now, that is not the case where you actually can fit the official buildable Iron Man figure as well as Ransom Fern's double-size mock version, so an even taller and bigger one, into the mock version of the Hulkbuster itself without having to make any compromises on the building integrity. So the first thing I want to point out is that this actually does have a little bit of head articulation, like you can kind of rotate the head, which is kind of cute, I mean it's, it's very minor in the rotation, like you can kind of see it like looks this way, or looks another way, it's nothing super crazy, but this one doesn't have that of course. That's really the only extra added articulation you have, but the way the official set works is that these two panels right here lift up, the head lifts up, and these lift down and you essentially are able to then place the buildable Iron Man inside of the vehicle itself. So inside the Hulkbuster, you can place the buildable Iron Man figure. The way it's done here is in a pretty similar manner, except it's kind of even easier because this entire construction just lifts upwards. And unfortunately, you can't really lift these outwards. So it is a little bit finicky. Like this is obviously a lot harder to play around with in the official set because then you get to some fragile bits and pieces in here. This entire construction, I believe you can remove, but I don't necessarily want to do it right now. I'm also going to press the button to just showcase the arc reactor lit up in case folks are curious about that. So that's kind of what that looks like fully lit up there. So the light is still integrated inwards. So if my pieces don't get stuck, you can actually retain that on motion. But essentially the big thing about the official set is that you take the Iron Man figure, and you can kind of put them inside. It's a little bit harder to do on cue. And the thing about the Iron Man figure is that little bits and pieces kind of fall off. So I'm just gonna remove those preemptively so I don't have to deal with that when I'm putting it inwards because it is not the easiest thing to put in. You really have to make it kind of like stand perfectly straight. And then even then feet are catching on something in there that I don't know what the feet are catching on. It is supposed to just slide on inwards. Okay, like, I'm kind of getting it. Ah, something, something's still catching on the feet. So, like, it's not the, like, easiest thing to do on the official set. And believe me, it's even harder to do on the mock. It is possible, though. It's just not the easiest. I'm going to move the flap out here so I can really just figure out, like, what is this catching on? Do, do, do. Let's go ahead and speed this up until I get this in. There we go. Actually, never mind. Okay, so... That's how that works, so you can see the actual Iron Man figure is inside of it. You can then close these up here, close these up, and then boom, there you go. So, 
took a little bit of, fin of like finagling around and messing around with it, but it does fit inside. Gonna go ahead and open that up. And I do think that effect of having the dome open up and reveal the Iron Man figure head is actually really cool. Like, I really do like the fact that you can integrate this in. Sure, maybe they had to compromise in the aesthetics to make that happen, but that's how that works. Let me just go ahead and... Ooh, removing him is going to be... Alright, removing him might be a bit of a challenge, actually, because now the legs are just caught on stuff. Here, what we're gonna... Oh, stuff is stuff is just falling out all over the place. I heard, like, a rattle that was not good. I'm sure something just broke off of this. I don't know what. Hmm. I do not know what broke off of this. Okay, well, we'll find that out in a little bit. But you can essentially do the same thing and put him inside the mock version. Now, this is a little bit easier said than done, which... Like, I did it once on camera, and it was possible, and I should have just taken a picture. But, actually, I mean, it's a little bit easier than the last time I tried. Let me see, can we get the hands, like, around... Actually, this is remarkably a lot easier than I thought it was, or at least I remembered it to be. Okay, still, still not in there fully, like, at the lowest point. Maybe I then need to remove the flap down the back and just kind of mess around with it myself. So, something's catching in there, and yes, it would be easier if I could actually see where the feet are going, which, like, here, it's so gappy that you can see where the feet are going, but that's not necessarily a pro. Like, that's kind of a con that I can see inside of this, so let me just close this up. It is easier to open and close, like, that. I'll, I'll give it that, but, okay, I, I don't really want to, like push it down, and I, I know that there's just like, there's like one piece the feet are definitely catching on, and let me see if I can go ahead and open up, oh, there it is, okay, I see it. Yeah, so that's what the flap in the back is for, is to be able to play around with this, and actually get the figure inside the cockpit. So yeah, it is like objectively harder to do on the mock, because the mock is just built better than the official set. In terms of built better, I mean just less gappy. So you do have to like mess around with the feet and make them fit into place. I don't know if it's worth doing it on camera again because it actually took me a while to do last time. But like, trust me, it is possible to do. Like, you can you can fully close this up with the Iron Man figure inside, which is very very cool. I also just damaged the bottom here, so this is a bit of a con. Like these pieces do fall out of the bottom sometimes. I'm gonna have to put these back on. All right, those are going on later. But then, rotating this around, you can kind of see what it's going for, right? Like, you, you can get it inside. Um, is that? Oh, okay, well that actually fits almost okay. So maybe this is just how it's supposed to be done. And yes, this is more fragile than the official set, like in, in a couple ways, like when you're playing around with it, this is more fragile than the official set. So would this have passed LEGO design standards? Probably not. But I mean, yeah, like it's closed up with the figure inside of it. I guess I didn't really even need to do anything else. It's a little bit lopsided, and I don't think that's necessarily the lowest it's supposed to go. But yeah, you can see right there, Iron Man is inside of this model. You can close up the dome, and yeah, there you go. So, I know a lot of folks were saying that, okay, well this looks so weird because they had to specifically design it to fit the Iron Man figure. And to that I say, it is possible. It is 100% possible to make a very nice version of it that is completely screen accurate and still fit this bad boy inside. So, I think that is basically all I have to say about this model versus that model. It's just better in every way. Yes, there are a couple of small little points of it that feel like maybe they're a bit more fragile, or maybe they could be more polished, like there's some gray studs on the side here, the feet could have been a little bit more polished compared to the official set, and sometimes some points in the back could have been better, but overall, this is just an improvement over this in so many ways, to the point where I would now actually recommend getting the official set and then getting instructions for this, and like seriously, if you have this, just build this. It is better in every way, it accomplishes everything that this set wanted to do, which was fit this inside, have arm articulation, elbow articulation, hand and finger articulation, have three lights, and be screen accurate, which this did not achieve 
and this did. This feels like a Hot toy sculpture, something that is like an official sculpture of the Hulkbuster. And almost from a, from a distance, like, this doesn't even look like Lego from a distance. So, I cannot sing its praises enough. Huge, huge fan now of Ransom Fern and their work on making this a reality. And seriously, this was a pretty crazy experience for me to just take pieces of this set and build it into this. Shout out to Cool Guy Dom for hooking me up with a 30% discount on the set when I bought it in Chicago. Thankfully, I did not have to buy the set again at full price. I got like a 30% discount, so that was fantastic. And yeah, overall, just would highly, highly recommend this. I have linked the instructions in the description below. So, so, so cool. All right, with that, we have summed up our review of Ransom Fern's rebuild of the UCS Hulkbuster, literally just better in every single way, shape, or form compared to the original set. I'm just so, so impressed that this just improves on it in every way. Huge kudos to Ransom Fern for putting this together. It just looks so cool and so accurate. And actually, now that the set is on sale, now might be a good time to actually pick up the set because then you can just use the pieces to be able to build this the completely accurate way, as opposed to, well, this. That's all for right now. Thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. And bye for now.